good afternoon today uh, we are uh, leading into third lecture of the uh, in the bharat kamrit mahotsav technical lecture series today the topic of the lecture is tomography for defect mapping and intel dissimilarity tool as we know the definition of tomography defined in wikipedia wikipedia is a procedure of imaging by sections through use of any kind of penetrating wave this method is used in radiology biology archaeology atmospheric science geophysics oceanography plasma physics material science astrophysics quantum physics and other areas of science the word tomography is derived from the ancient greek word tomos that means slice or section and graphos means to write in this context to describe so the device device used in tomography is called a tomograph while the image produced is called a tomogram this method has originated in 1979 when dr godfrey newbold hounsfield an english electrical engineer shared the nobel prize for developing the diagnostic technique of x-ray computed axial tomography that is cat scanning since then this subject picked up simultaneously in 1976 we have a pioneering work but done by ekki and lee published in journal of physical research wherein they have plotted the diagram of signal perturbation as tomogram so geophysics was also simultaneously doing work on tomography but the plot was not as good as medical tomography during initial stages from 79 to 90 most of the tomography work in geophysics was done as wave for inversion of earthquake data to decipher the subsurface structure exploration tomography on commercial scale started in geophysics from 90s with the use of artificial seismic source and receiver in a tailor made array in two borehole setup so it's uh, 10 years later we have commercial applications of tomography in geophysics majority of publications on geophysical tomography started appearing from late 1990s ngi norwegian geological institute from which we had a partnership they had done it in first in 1995 we received the tomography setup under in pictogram between nrm and ngi during 1980 to 2001 and first commercial scale tomography was done by us in 2000 at chamera 2 had a electric project at its dam axis in himachal pradesh so we were, we started our tomography in 2000 today we are 20 years in this business the question is why is, why do we need tomography so we should understand that tomography belongs to the area of geophysics real and borehole geophysics where in surveys are done either through borehole or borehole surface combinations we can do both we have we can have uh, uh, sensors on the borehole and source on the surface or uh, source in the borehole and sensor on the surface both way we can do second important point is depth reach of a conventional surface geophysical survey is 1/4 to 1/6 of the surface spread length that means if we have to investigate up to 25 to 30 meter depth we need at least 200 meter free space on the surface hence wherever sufficient free surface is not available for surface spread of sensor or where where steep slopes prevent us uh, doing survey on the surface or we have water body which which prevent surface access or urban constructions like in metro where we cannot do surface survey borehole surface borehole survey is the only alternative and there the tomography comes into picture all these places tomography can help us to do the survey same survey can be done second third important point is there is no restriction of the depth reach in a borehole survey only restriction is borehole spacing that uh, that uh, dilutes the uh, resolution to some extent but there is no uh, effect on the depth reach then tomo what is to why tomography second part tomography is imaging in a vertical plane hence wherever stability analysis of pillar foundations or any static structure is required there is no alternative to tomography we have to do tomography because it looks down vertically at one point so unlike surface geophysical methods which rely on transmitted and reflected waves involving two way travel time so whenever we carry out survey from surface we send some waves seismic wave electrical wave uh, 
water, but we use exploration. That way we send it, it goes down, gets reflected and then picked up on the surface. So all the waves recorded are two-way travel time, but tomographic method depends on one-way travel time. That is transmission only, that the signal is transmitted from a transmitter and received in the receiver. There is no reflection, cross-reflection involved. Third thing is resolution and accuracy of subsurface feature is much higher in tomographic section than that obtained by the surface geophysical survey. I will explain this part because tomography is a feature of multiple imaging. So once we decode further how tomography is done, that part will be clear why resolution and accuracy is very higher, very high in tomography survey. So how we acquire data in a tomography? Technically, tomography is a survey in an array. We have a we one borehole where in source we have a source locations and one borehole we have a receiver chain like in seismic survey. So once we uh, use one position of the source, the uh, we trigger the source position. The signal is received by all the trans by all the receiver positions in in the hole. Then what we what we do is we move the source to the second point, and again trigger the source and again signal will be received by all the receivers. Like that we keep on doing. The source is moved to third point, source is moved to fourth point, source is moved to fifth point, sixth point, and if we put it eight by eight. We do eight times source moving and the sensor spread is fixed, that receiver spread is fixed. So technically at the end of what we do is, what we get is the center part. The center part of this section is scanned. If it is an eight, eight by eight array, that means it is scanned 64 times. We have eight source positions and eight receiver positions. So 64 rays are passing through the center. So it is a type of cross hole survey in which source and receivers are two different hole. We can have borehole surface combination also. Transmitted signal from borehole one is picked up by the receivers in borehole two simultaneously. Then the source is moved on to second location and so on. Thus it continues. So, so in, in effect, we are seeing the center portion getting scanned 64 times for an eight by eight source receiver array. So if we increase the array, the number of waves traveling in the center will be much higher. So, to, so tomography data is always collected from bottom to top. In a seismic tomography survey, the source can be explosive source, sparker source, hammer source, and it is always moved from bottom to top position at preset interval. Receiver is a sensor chain, 12, 24, 14, depending upon the requirement or availability of hardware. So we can do tomography using both seismic and GPR. In GPR tomography, we don't have a receiver chain. We have a single channel receiver. So both source and receivers are single unit, hence for one source position, all receiver positions that are collected sequentially. Then the source is moved to second location and the entire, entire exercise is repeated. This is very cumbersome and time consuming. So keeping one position of the source fixed, we have to move receiver at eight locations and then finish the survey. Then we have to move to second location. So one by one, one by one, keep collecting data. It's very time consuming, but we have done enough GPR tomography also. Deeper holes are scanned in segments, and then the process section is integrated. So this this part I will explain with reference to this figure. If if the hole depth is 50, 60, 70 meter, we can't have a signal traveling from 70 meter deep to the surface. It cannot travel. We don't have enough. If we if we use too much explosive, the hole will be damaged. So what we do is we we segment the hole so bottom 20 meter we will do in one step then next 20 meter the next 20 meter next 20 meter so we generate segmented section and then we integrate everything so deeper holes are scanned in segments and then the process process section is integrated and we generate the combined tomogram so this is a 12 by 12 where here it is soon so overall ray path in a tomography survey is a mess of n1 by n2 where N1 is the number of transmitter locations and N2 is the number of receiver locations. So this generates a N1 by N2 data matrix of travel time against respective distances. So that for generating a tomogram, entire N1 by N2 data matrix is inverted simultaneously. So you see here, we have this equation solving is very, very complete time consuming here. We have to, as if it is a 12 by 12 station array, so we will have 144 travel time data and this 144 data matrix has to be inverted simultaneously to generate a tomogram. Now comes the type of tomography. Tomography can be done using both GPR and seismic source. Nowadays we have got uh, in our NIRM borehole electrical source also. We can do electrical receivity tomography also using two boreholes. 
Tomography can be done in terms of perturbations of medium properties like attenuation or velocity tomography. Whatever parameter we choose accordingly, the perturbation in that parameter will give me that type of tomogram. Velocity tomography is done for assessment of medium properties or interface for foundation design or for assessment of the extent of reinforcement that is grouting. To what extent grouting has been done, we can check by velocity tomography. For damage assessment, attenuation tomography is the best answer. This works for both seismic and GPR method. Finally, source signature is very crucial for damage assessment by attenuation parameter. And uh, we have done uh, some advancement in this field and developed our own method, frequency driven attenuation tomography, where we highlight the, uh, every pick up a particular uh, source uh, frequency and highlight the uh, target feature by processing, while processing the data. Now comes seismic tomography. The choice of tomography method depends on the purpose and the site condition or situation. If both extent and quality of damage is to be assessed for planning and restoration, seismic tomography is the best answer. But it's not always possible. If damage to the medium is a matter of concern, we cannot use a vibratory source as it may further damage the medium. So if we are doing a damage assessment and if it is critical and we are using a vibratory source, before assessing the damage, it may get damaged further. So then we have to switch over to our GPR method, GPR tomograph. Other, other conditions, operational conditions like horizontal, vertical upwards, holes also restrict the use of seismic source. We cannot put seismic source in horizontal hole or vertically upward hole because we have to create a medium. We use water filled holes to send seismic signals. Medium quality, uh, medium velocity is the best discriminant for use in seismic tomography. This can be done borehole to borehole and borehole to surface combinations also. So velocity is the best discriminant in seismic tomography. We always depend upon the uh, velocity tomogram for the seismic data analysis, seismic tomography data analysis. In GPR tomography, if damage is a matter of concern and damage assessment is done is the criteria, damage assessment alone is the criteria, then GPR tomography is the best answer. We can identify the defect by changing the attenuation properties, which is designated by 16 color code of the medium. But it does not provide any information on the medium in terms of velocity, because change in GPR velocity with damage is insignificant. So we cannot find out, like seismic, the velocity tomography in GPR to find out the damage information. Then depending on the extent of damage, a selective frequency can be chosen to enhance the defect. This is because all of tomography is basically wavelength imaging. That's how it has been brought from medical science to here. So this led to the development of FDAT, that is a unique processing method developed by NRM, which has never failed. We call it frequency domain attenuation tomography, wherein we choose a particular frequency which focuses the target, or which enhances the target feature, such that we get the picture whatever we want. Second part we have, we want to highlight here. Mm, here it has come. Yes, in solving tomography data in medical science, that is the parent of tomography from where this origin it has originated. The image reconstruction is a forward and deterministic problem because the image is constructed out of the extent of X-ray absorbed by the tissue or bone, and a unique solution is always obtained. But when it comes to geophysics, the tomographic image reconstruction is an inverse problem. We do not have the source signature completely known, and we are trying to build up the whole uh, section. So in this case, the measurements are first made of some energy that has propagated through a medium. The received character of this energy, amplitude, travel time, is used to infer the values, velocity, density, permittivity of the medium through which it has propagated. This never gives us a unique solution, and we always get eigenvalues. The one with minimum RMS error is chosen as the best possible image reconstruction. So it should be borne in mind that uh, tomographic section is not a unique solution, but still it is the best answer. You will see it later. We, are, we have explained further. The obtaining tomographic, the tomographic problem can be stated as from projections that is sum up interior values of the waveform measured outside the object to find the interior distribution of the values inside the object. This is a technical term. I will not delve it further into it. Basically, it says that the waveform which we are recording outside the target has to be interpreted in terms of distortion. It has taken place within the target. And then we have to identify the target. 
so this type of problem solution is a, is a, is a, is a solution of a integral equation and is known as radon tra radon transform so there are two broad categories of techniques used for this interval values projections they are transform and series expansion method here we are using series expansion methods in solving the tomographic data so series expansion method start by considering the object or area of interest to be comprised of boxes or pixel so we distribute the area in pixels then energy is consi considered to propagate through the various pixels to provide a sum or projection of the pixel values the pixel values are then related to the sum this is often related to solving large linear equations with non unique solutions i will explain this further graphically the two algorithms that is used in the reconstruction of tomographic data is algebraic reconstruction technique and simultaneous iterative reconstruction technique we are using simultaneous iteration technique because this is more accurate and the convergence is much faster we have the software what we use is compiled and given to us under entry program by ngi norway now you see the what technically is done during data collection we have the same setup which we had shown earlier this is the borehole of a transmitter and this is the borehole of receiver we have the source here triggered and it passes through anomalous zone which we have placed in the center it could be any anomaly weak zone damage zone fault plane shear zone anything so if this anomaly we can consider with two character one it has a lower velocity v2 is less than v1 where the background velocity is v1 or it has a higher attenuation 8 db per meter in contrast to 5 db per meter of the background now to solve this we are dividing this whole area between this two bore hole into a grid into a grid of 50 by 100 or whatever size we choose we do, we decide to divide by software and this effect of this anomaly basically lies the received wave form is always late whenever it goes through the medium with lower velocity so these wave forms have arrived late or we can say if it is an attenuation tomogram these wave forms will have a smaller amplitude because the it has attenuated while passing through the anomaly so that's how the this uh, distortion is takes place where while it passes through the medium and this distortion is analyzed in terms of existence of this medium second part here when we divide into different pixel or grid elements we can see this each each box will be having a velocity value or a, or attenuation values but in this case only one portion of the box is occupied by the anomaly so what happens when we process the tomogram we the entire box is giving that velocity value so there is a effect called a smearing effect this is smearing effect can be curtailed if more and more number of rays passes through the anomaly that is possible only when the anomaly is at the center that is explained in the next picture you see here when the anomaly is in the bottom or anomaly is in the top the number of rays passing through it are less when anomaly is in the center maximum number of rays pass through it the the, the effect of smearing is minimum while the anomaly is on one side of the other side of bore hole again the same situation happens number of rays are lessening pass so the, the the target is always expanded or smearing effect takes place we do not know how to place the target anomaly in the center so it so happens in the field that we have drilled the hole but the target may be in uh, along the side of the hole or it may be punctured by the hole itself so we are not sure where the target is and when we do the tomogram then we realize that this picture has been distorted we, you can see some of the results when we discuss case study where we have this anomaly is not in the center and what happened during interpretation then question is how effective is the inversion tomographic inversion yields best result if the data collection is designed in the ratio of 2 is to 1 that is if separation is 1 depth should be 2 or 15 meter separation 30 meter depth is ideal now what we do is we divide largest dimension that into 100 cells so that make that makes me 100 by 50 5000 cells for which perturbation properties we are determining for a 50 meter deep bore hole surveyed in 2 meter interval the area size will be 25 by 25 or 50 by 50 that is 2500 or 625 maximum these six they will generate 2600 or 2500 equations from which we have to determine 5000 unknown parameters for 5000 cells it is not possible with 2000 equations we cannot get 5000 values 
So this is a non-deterministic inverse problem. So we have only eigenvalues as solutions and we get minimum RMS value as the tomogram. So how the error is contained is cell through which the maximum number of rays pass yield the best or nearest real value and other cells yield either the under or overestimated value. What is the advantage of Swiss tomography? Because of the cell-wise discrete elements for determining data value, the resolution of tomographic section is one by 100. Because you see largest dimension we have divided by 100. So it is too good considering the solution of the inverse problem we are doing and we are getting resolution of one by 100. In comparison, the surface geophysical methods have a resolution only of one by 10. That means if you are doing of investigation up to depth of 10 meter, we can expect a resolution of one meter or one by 15, say 70 centimeter, not more than that. But same 10 meter, if we are doing by this tomography, we should expect a resolution of 10 by 100, that is 10 centimeter. So it's too good. Then number three, we can selectively choose velocity or attenuation tomogram during data processing or even choose repetitive frequency for FDAT. This is not possible in surface survey. We have to choose only velocity there or attenuation there. All of, all of them had to uh, add to target fix enhancement, a facility which is not possible with surface survey data. So we can use this velocity attenuation or frequency choosing and enhance the target in tomography, which we cannot do in surface survey data. Then comes 3D tomography. So we can do tomography in 2D or 3D both. So 3D tomography is prepared by combining a set of 2D tomographic sections. So at least three boreholes must be provided to obtain 2D sections between AB, BC, and CA. Or if we have a four boreholes, so we will connect two diagonals and uh, that will act as overlapping sections and convert the 2D sections into 3D tomogram. 3D tomogram provides more clarity about subsurface by way of rotation of the section and slicing facility at any level or any angle. So we can rotate, we can turn any, any direction, any angle, cut down and see what is the section, what is the rock type at that point and analyze further in detail. So that, that is done by 3D tomogram. You will, uh, whatever the little surgical background I explained, this will, I will uh, show it through case studies, which we have done uh, using both seismic and GPR methods. The first project we have done in 2000, as I said earlier, this was seismic tomography at the dam axis of Chamera Stage 2 hydroelectric project in Himachal Pradesh. This survey was done in the center of the dam axis across river Ravi for a depth of 50 meter, two boreholes were drilled. And the objective was to find out where is the contact zone of overburden and hard rock. And number one, number two, up to what extent the grouting should be required to prevent seepage and leakage. So this two uh, target, we have done tomography in the center of the dam axis across that Ravi River. Ravi River. And the separation here is shown in the uh, diagram is 20 meter and the depth is 50 meter. So it satisfies the criteria of two is to one ratio. And you see the tomogram that is generated here. We are getting the top rock type that is 3000 velocity then we have a 2000 velocity zone which is basically a soft rock or overburden area then we have again 3000 3500 so we have interpreted this section and we have given this map here the top we have hard rock exposed then we have a low velocity zone we have this contact zone between overburden and the intermediate type rock and we have intermediate type strata up to 100 mpa strength and then we transit to hard rock so this portion between uh, contract zone and this hard rock portion should be grouted. This is what we have written in our report that this portion 11,008, this uh, 11,000 portion between OV level bottom and HR level top has to be grouted. That is 11,025 to 11,008. This portion has to be grouted. And we have identified a joint plane, foliation plane based on the this uh, folding in this uh, hard rock contour. That is 5,000 level contour. So this, this is how the tomographic section was interpreted and given the first tomographic visual. From there, we have moved today and we have much better tomograms generated now. The second tomographic section I am discussing with Seismic is Tista Hydroelectric Project of Himachal Pradesh again. Here, the beauty is we have done the tomography across the river. That means we have used one bank for one hole and second bank for other hole. 
So entire width of the river was scanned through one tomogram. So Tista River is a high current river, and uh, people, they, the authorities wanted to find out the rock level and they put drilling rig. But anytime the uh, river current becomes very high and rigs get washed away, four, they lost four drilling rigs. Then they requested alternative method and we stepped in with tomographic survey. So we had uh, we had got two boreholes drilled, one on the left side, one on the right side. There was no no way to reach, so a ropeway was connected, and we lost the this uh, bank through that ropeway and landed with our equipment on the receiver side. So the, this uh, objective was to map the subsurface along the dam axis, indicate the presence of shear weak zone, if any. Here. This tomogram is generated. You can see this uh, tomogram I have plotted here. This uh, type of tomogram shows that presence of hard rock that is more than 3,500 meter per second, or that a monster uniaxial uni compressive strength of 100 MPa is at 40 meter depth. This is the hard rock envelope, 3,500 envelope here. Close to receiver hole. That means in this hole, there is another weak zone coming that is having a velocity of less than 3000 it is 3000 and 2500 this dotted zone is coming so this shows the degradation of the rock mass quality at this depth so this this axis is very crucial because here 3000 and then again hard rock is separated and we have a weak zone crossing here and going at this angle we what we did is we just pushed this section into the geological section available to them given by the gsi these are the two boreholes. We had got it drilled and we placed our tomogram on that borehole. And based on the hard rock mapped by tomography, we have drawn the hard rock level here. This black color line shows the up updated level of the hard rock, whereas the original hard rock level is much deeper. So this hard rock level got updated with our tomographic survey and we are showing a new level. What was the question mark is being shown is what what is the implication of the weak zone in the corner that has to be interpreted. They repeatedly requested that if we can do S wave tomography and we can find out why this weak zone in the corner at that time. NRM did not have that um, S wave uh, source, so we refused. And uh, then NGRI had done it and they found a shear zone that has existed at, the, at that position and the dam axis was shifted from that position. So what we concluded from tomography is the top 15 meter section has boulders and river and deposit followed by weathered rock of 10 meter thickness and remaining sections have gradations of hard rock. Presence of weak zone is indicated by the low velocity feature around um, RL 1485 meters on the right bank. This needs to be confirmed by S wave tomogram to rule out the presence of shear zone. Hard rock profile is mapped between 1490 to 1500 meter between two boreholes dipping towards left bank. So geological section needs to be updated accordingly. They later drill and found out that our tomogram gives the correct result and uh, three places uh, it in the rock level, they got what was shown in our tomogram and they said we will update the geological section. It was a projected section in any case. Then the third case study I am showing is this Bangalore here. We have done the foundation evaluation of bridge piers. This Hosur flyover of Bangalore is one of the busiest flyover commissioned in 2008. At the time of construction, three pillars of this flyover had problem with hard rock level for deciding the founding depth. Problem was they, they had uh, drilled on the two corners of the pier and one corner the hard rock was 10 meter, one corner was 30 meter. They were puzzled why this is happening and they said we cannot decide. Let us do some survey and find out what is the reason of this anomaly. This has happened at three locations and this is precondition. They drill it and find out the hard rock level. So geophysical survey was requisitioned to map the depth of the hard rock accurately and evaluate the deeper of weight rock within the pier location. This is the flyover today, which we are say, seen in the right side photograph. And this is what they, we had done. We have used, the, we have got four boreholes drilled in the pier area. And we carried out the tomography along the diagonals. Two diagonals we have done. And we have got 2D tomogram here. And as you can see, the hard rock level here is uh, somewhere 808 to 791. So 9 meter. And here it is 22 meter deep. 
so it's uh, it's steeply dipping at this angle same thing in other other uh, diagonal also and we combine this into a 3d tomogram and you can see this result the dip of the hard rock is so steep between the two piers between the two diagonals so the combining two diagonal sections into 3d tomogram reveal presence of a steeply inclined rock layer in the pier foundation regime jointed rock mass layer was highly undulating this this uh, curvature type thing this is jointed rock mass layer green color and hard rock layer was about 5.5 meter below the ground at receiver hole and 10 meter at the transmitter hole the average slope of the hard rock is 70 degree across the transmitter hole this is very steeply dipping hard rock so what we suggested is anchoring of the pillar bottom with the hard rock level is required then only we can get a stable foundation they asked for anchor design and we suggested some references through which the anchor is designed and then they had finished that ply this pier construction and the flyover is through today the fourth case study of this is chena bridge river where we have done the stability analysis of pier 60 of the chena bridge chena bridge as we know it has become a talk of the news today news talk every time you will see in paper a news this arch is completed that is coming this is one of the largest arch bridge in the world with a arch span of 485 meter the beauty with this bridge is the river is so deep that two qutub minars can be put between the top of the arch to the bottom of the river 359 meter we have the height of the plate uh, for railway line which will be crossing here so there is no way they can erect that pillar so decided they will put arch and they will have this type of uh, bridge construction here and in this uh, this also once one side of the river uh, basin is very steeply dipping and this uh, designing pillars for p5 p6 p7 is very very challenging for them in such a steeply dipping condition so one such pillar p6 they have excavated for the bottom foundation level that is 15 meter they excavate and decide the foundation you see when uh, this precarious condition was formed at the foundation platform after 50 meter excavation what was seen was 5 to 50 cm wide cracks you see these cracks that got exposed on the foundation platform this crack is so wide that an unopened cement bag can be pushed inside this is 50 cm wide cement bag is going just like that so these cracks were grouted and up to a depth of 60 meter which consume around 30000 bags of cement now the question is whether the grout has gone into the crack ceiling or it has gone into river or whether it has done properly or not it has to be checked before we decide the foundation so in order to check the efficacy of grouting and presence of remnant activities cavities or weak zone p wave tomography across the five bore holes drilled up to a depth of 50 meter was proposed by krcl and done by nirm and this is what we had suggested them to drill the bore holes 1 2 3 4 5 6 so that the entire crack regime is mapped and we can see whether the crack is sealed up to the bottom or not you see this is the 2 2d tomogram and this is the 3d tomogram most of the crack portion up to the depth up to the top 30 meter portion here 0 to 30 seems to have been packed because we are getting a velocity of 4000 5000 6000 but as we go down 45 50 meter the bottom portion is not so packed we are getting lot of weak zones where the velocity is much lower that is 2000 3000 as good as it is crack is left untreated so this seems to be convincing that they are able to reach because as per uh, their requirement and the pounding level uh, strength should be good up to 15 meter that is the bosnik's criteria they decide the load bearing uh, thickness but what happens on the top on the top here that b2 corner you see here blue color and when we convert to 3d tomogram we are getting here the weak zone here and uh, you see this weak zone is we can tilt and so this is the cup type weak zone that is found on right on the top of this grouted area so they were puzzled how this how come this top is not grouted whereas grout had reached all along so with load bearing they determined within top 15 meter the weak zone in the center in the top 5 meter is the main concern for stability so further investigation we are done to analyze this weak zone so we run ucs data q value and everything we plotted we found q value less than 0.01 in this area 0.1 this area 
so that shows that it is not grouted this was not acceptable then they opened this whole area let us see what is wrong with that they found there is no grout it was only fine material and then they decided to grout again and they grouted that area and went ahead by uh, with the foundation by putting 5 meter concrete mat on the top then this uh, next tomography is uh, survey is for railway pillars for chandigarh bilaspur rail link that is coming up now here you see this is a 475 km long uh, bilaspur uh, chandigarh bilaspur manali le railway link one segment of this link is being implemented by rvnl today and this project area is in the satluj river basin and the alignment crosses the tributaries of satluj which merges into the gobind sagar reservoir so bridges for this alignment have been planned at such locations where silting up reservoir exist and hence geotechnical geotechnical investigations were carried out to find out whether this is stable area or not the present investigation using pv tomogram was done in two such suspected pillar locations where adequate surface information was not available you see uh, they have drilled us two bore hole and this log was provided to us if you see the log right from the 3 meter down to 35 meter depth they are getting sandstone here in the bore hole log and the second log they are getting from 6 meter to 15 meter and again from 30 meter to 35 meter sandstone and remaining portions they are getting siltstone so this seems to be very good area but what happens when we do tomography we need have done tomography we are unable to find anywhere velocity above 6 this uh, this green color this red color is uh, just scattered in corner that is also 1400 but remaining places we are getting velocity average 500 600 700 and in the center foundation it is just 400 200 is unbelievable this type of velocity then we went to a second bridge pillar location second location also they have got everywhere sandstone in the borehole log siltstone sandstone and when we have done this still poor condition we have velocity of only 300 400 everywhere it's very very poor velocity we are puzzled why this is happening we just tabulated the average velocity we found out it is 790 meter per second this is 500 meter per second in second location this cannot be true seeing the borehole log so what we suggested is what you have got here in borehole is maybe this uh, this this is a terrace deposit we have got the not matrix there is no matrix in that so we are getting low velocity these are all uh, river terraces which has been deposited and that's why this whole area is unstable and you cannot construct pillar in that area so now they have we had a discussion last time when they visited here and they said most likely we will skip these two locations and put a new type of our pillar design with 100 meter gap there will not be any pillar in these two pillars but before that we will confirm with two more tomogram that we have to do again and rule out that uh, pillars look, uh, laying down is not possible two reasons number one it is terrace deposit number two the reservoir area the reservoir area rises by 15 meter during winter uh, the, during uh, top and it goes on a 15 meter so the bottom of the pillars will be in the water every time and seeing this low velocity condition it's not possible to have any load bearing strata and we say that neither um, this uh, well foundation nor a pile foundation is possible and better to skip these sites we have recommended the last tomography we are showing the uh, seismic tomography is belonging to koteswar dam where the objective was to find out the source of water leak when we when we were carrying out the survey the dam was full to the brim it was the brim uh, top level it was filled and we went to the bottom level and it was all flooded it was all flooded with uh, knee deep water and they had drilled some hole and this job was given to cwprs they lost the sensor in one of the bore holes and abandoned the work and left when we again reached and we got the holes drilled and we put hdp pipe for the purpose but by the time they start drilling the artesian type water is coming so this is a heavy leakage from the side wall as well as from the bottom everywhere leakage is too much and this is not expected in this area because dam was severely grouted and the rate of water seepage was 2000 liter per minute you see in the bottom gallery that is somewhere around 100 meter below the water level in the dam 
this is survey being done what we are showing is gpr uh, tomography being done but we have done before that seismic tomography also we had done and gpr tomography was also done in this area and you see this uh, when we plotted the tomogram because this area is heavily grouted it is difficult to find the weak zone. So what weak zone we are showing here is somewhere it, these weak zones have a velocity of 2,500 to 3,500. It seems to be rock, but considering the background of 5,000, 4,500, this appears to be the weak zone, very, very weak zone. And uh, this is uh, coming from 523 to 476, up to 50 meter depth we have tested and we have found out that everywhere this type of weak zone exists. All, all the tomograms, we have identified these weak zones and asked them to grout this area. When they grouted this area, this entire dam, this gallery became dry, as dry as this room. So they, this, this, that confirms that whatever we have identified the weak zones and source of leakage was correct. So all these leakage zones were 15 to 20 meters below the water gallery. And Though the random grouting was done, this time they have done pinpointed grouting for that location and they grouted the area. And with this, there was no seepage and it became totally dry. Then we come down to GPR tomography. Here we have uh, some case study we have discussed in first lecture and during GPR uh, data presentation. So some, some slides will be repeated, but um, I will explain though in terms of tomography here. So the first tomogram I am showing GPR tomography is run in coal SNT project. Here the effect of you can see the anomaly not being in the center you can see in this case, the typical case. That's why we have brought this for presentation today. So this the purpose of this tomography was mapping the in seam fault in the coal seam. So we have selected under coal SNT project, uh, Gotham Kani Open Cast Project SCCL for the detection of in seam fault which is normally not detected by the surface survey because if fault is of a small dimension and it is in coal seam, we cannot detect by surface geophysical survey. So two potential locations were selected in block A of panel number 49. And one set means two boreholes at each location was uh, drilled. And we requested for logging also, but it was a costly business. They said we will log one set of borehole for your requirement for cross verification purpose. Other boreholes were not logged. So results were not so explicit here because the target was not in the center. You can see the result now. Here, the first GPR tomography we have done between borehole pairs one and two. This is 50 by 50 data matrix we have obtained. And um, this uh, 50 by 50 data matrix, that means every one meter we have collected the data using this GPR. And after 200 iterations, we got RMS error of less than 0.01%, and we concluded that this is a tomogram. Nothing is clear in this tomogram except the two high attenuation zones of one and two, which has a locus of somewhere around six, more than six dB. You see here, two is a yellowish zone that is coming down to this seven, eight, eight dB, 10 dB. We are getting this attenuation. So this attenuation is on one side. It's not in the center here. It's in the one, so it's not so well resolved. So what we expect is this uh, this um, locus of this uh, uh, high attenuation zones could be the fault axis. So we have just plotted this. So this is a suspected uh, fault plane. This is the 6 dB envelope, the 6 dB envelope, and we have drawn this is the fault plane. We translated this as the fault, and this could be the upper bench, this with the lower bench. They drilled in this area and confirmed, yes, here it has faulted and fault. Uh, through is 5.7 meters they have just uh, mapped and reported to us in subsequent communication. Second site, we will, the uh, second borehole, also a similar situation happened. Here also, we, the second borehole pair three and four we drilled. Once again, anomaly is stuck on the one borehole only here. So we have got only one height near St. John, which is value of 8 dB per meter and circle at the bottom of borehole number four here. The shape of this possible zone, it is bulging in this direction, you see, which is bulging in this direction, like this. This hints at the possible fault axis. So we just concluded this possible fault axis could be in this direction. Luckily, this borehole was logged here. So we can see this borehole log is also available. This, this is the log, coal, cell, sandstone. This is a log against that we have plotted. And this we have uh, suspected fault plane, we have said, and this is the upper bench and this is the lower bench. 
same thing is confirmed more or less by this log also so these two borehole are used to in the tomographic data collection where logged and are shown in the advanced table possible fault axis and its through is drawn based on the expected lines of borehole data correlation together for best resolution of features in tomography the target should be in the center of boreholes and this is the best example why we are not able to because we do not know where is the fault so we have just drilled and it so happened that this borehole itself is crossing the fault so this problem has happened during mapping then this is the gpr tomography done at the desilting chamber of the tala hydrotechnical project in the crown area we have done this in the and this is the section of the desilting chamber which is 14 meter wide and 18 meter high and damage was seen at one position you can see the crack and this crack extended up to 1 km in length so what we drilled uh, did is we drilled two bore holes on both side of crack and pushed bore hole camera crack was not seen in the camera then we went through tomographic exercise to map whether whether the crack is in between or not so we this bore bore holes we have used transmitter and receiver and we just like this tomogram we have pushed the Um, uh, transmitter receiver waves and we expect the crack is moving in the center somewhere because it is not seen in the camera this is the tomographic uh, plane what we got and we have placed uh, on the schematically on that uh, across the boreholes on the crown itself and here we can find that high attenuation zone is right here in this portion this is more than 10 db as against the background area of uh, less than 4 db so the up to this depth that is uh, roughly an envelope of 5 meter is already crushed that's what this tomogram is showing the 5 meter is too big an area to reinforce that's why when they put bore holes and try to stop the more larger chunk of roof fell, fell down along with the bolt so then they decided to go ahead with rib support and this uh, tunneling was finished this excavation was finished completed so we construct a geological setting you see here we are showing this is the crack plane zone of a uh, crack plane zone of thickness and the wedge formation is here and this whole area is getting damaged uh, having the influence of damage here and uh, water seepage is seen because another joint plane is coming so what how this joint plane is mapped is we have done borehole profiling from this borehole as well as this borehole and mapped this crack planes profile through this borehole and effect of this crack on the overall stability was mapped through tomography the next tomographic uh, gpr section is in mumbai where we have done for uh, in marol naka this is ongoing project of uh, mumbai metro and uh, during excavation stage water seepage was seen heavily in, in the tunnel and um, source of water body was could not be located or identified marol naka is a very busy location already surface metro is running on the top and bottom another metro is being laid down and uh, this tbm phase also pressure increased up to 4.5 bar during ring installation so it was necessary to locate the source of water and stop it because if this area gets unstable the entire metro will stop so they have put a target on all the metro pillars on the top and monitoring whether there is any movement in instability or not by the time we reached uh, they are uh, monitoring was continuing for 20 15 20 days so the there was no scope for any surface survey because it's a very busy area and the top uh, surface is faulted so we cannot do seismic concrete road is there we cannot do seismic ert survey was also ruled out because so many utilities are present in the survey below the surface so there is no place to carry out even gpr survey because it's a busy traffic junction so no space so we suggested at least you drill some bore hole and we will carry out cross hole tomography and a prior visit i had gone there and checked uh, there was no other feasibility than this so we requested them to drill the bore hole they agreed with great, great difficulty that we will do and uh, it was done four bore holes five bore holes were drilled up to a depth of 20 25 meter that is just up to the crown level of the tunnel bottom tunnel we have done the tomography and it was we were not able to find out any leakage source anywhere so we have done five source one of the tomogram we find that there is a low attenuation zone coming here the diagonal type feature we have found one one tomogram only and uh, all the tomograms were generated using fdft at 100 megahertz 
In one of the sections, we could find that uh, this uh, dotted colors, blue color zone is there, which is lower, low attenuation zone, water bearing strata, and we just made 3D tomogram. When we convert it to 3D tomogram, we are getting this water trap and water seepage area where from it is coming. So we suggested in our report that you drill a borehole at this location and seal this area. Once they have done that, the water flow is stopped in the tunnel. So they are really with this uh, tomography, we are able to locate and plug the water leakage in the tunnel. And that's how this project is uh, completed and they went ahead further. Here it is another uh, case of um, GPR tomography in the Wanka Dam of Bhutan. During construction, this um, dam was over flooded uh, in one of the season. And um, then the water receded, a lot of cracks were seen on the surface. The problem here was by that time, uh, the dam has only gone up to nine meter high in different blocks, nine meter, six meter, seven meter. The question was raised that if this crack is superficial, we can seal and go ahead. If this crack is going down, we have to demolish this uh, structure and reconstruct the hold uh, again. And then we were roped in to map this crack depth and influence of the crack. We did both surface survey as well as borehole survey. And we found that the crack was only six meter in depth as against nine meter, maximum six meter, wherever the dam has gone up to 15 meter high and minimum it was half a meter everywhere. So that, that means it is a superficial crack and we said you can seal and go ahead. Once they sealed it, they wanted to know whether it was sealed properly or not. So you can see here, there is an inspection gallery uh, at that uh, top level. Now it is it must be inside when, the, when we had gone. At that time, but the inspection gallery top, it was just made. And we have done all the survey on the crack across the crack plane. We have done the drill hole and got the tomography done. And this is the borehole drill hole. And, and the first section we have, we are showing the drill hole in this area as well as here. So all this we have done. And wherever we found the error, we asked them to grout it. So to check the grout efficiency, we have, this is the cracked planes, which we have mapped and we have plotted there. When they had uh, grouted it, this is the situation before grouting. And when they have grouted, all this inhomogeneity in the crack plane has gone, it has become background and only this lobe is left out. We send a grout it again. And once they lift the borehole casing, they will grout this portion also, so this will go. So with this grouting and sealing, the dam was supposed to have uh, stabilized and it further construction was completed and it is in operation through no other problem was found. So with this uh, tomographic result, we cleared that dam is stable and it has not, the damage is not serious to get it demolished. Then this tomography is for uh, archaeological survey in Gujarat, in Vadnagar area. So excavations at Vadnagar by archaeological department of Gujarat found trace of Buddhist monastery in 2006. The same was discovered by archaeological survey of India at nearby places in order to explore the extension of such old settlement. IIT Mumbai was approached by ASI and IIT Mumbai in turn requested us to carry out GPR survey in some virgin area. So we selected nearby primary school, girls school and surrounding areas where were monastery was there to locate whether there is any trace of um, archaeological remains or not. So we have done survey from both borehole as well as surface. In this case, I am just insisting we are showing borehole tomogram, tomography. So this is the uh, excavated, you can see the monastery and we have done here survey uh, side of it and along this road everywhere we have done. In this school we have done through boreholes and we have just located these three boreholes we have done and we have done this cross hole survey and we generated the tomogram. These are the traces of uh, buried monastery we found along this and later on it, you must have read in paper it has come. They have excavated and found the monastery there and uh, they are very much pleased to see the results as exactly matching. And uh, we did tomography also and we generated the 3D tomogram and we found that there is a collapsed structure. These are pillars buried in the school campus below that. And uh, as for local people, this, there was a temple there and it got buried 
and uh, ex on excavation they found, but they did not want to destroy the school, so it is lying as such. We found this evidence, and it is up to the government to decide what they want to do. So, conclusion is surface survey close to the old excavator monastery confirmed the presence of further extension up to 12 meter depth. Both surface and borehole GPR tomography in the school indicated presence of buried monument. Following these findings, which were partly confirmed by borehole drilling, now we have we are in the ASI committee of experts for planning future excavations at Vardnagar, and uh, we have been consulted twice how to do further planning for excavation and other exercise. So this concludes the presentation about uh, this uh, tomography, and most of the cases it is for damage assessment or uh, some buried structures and location of uh, area of interest. So this is what I wanted to convey that tomography is a vital tool for this type of uh, study. And uh, I conclude my lecture and seek any further question for any clarification from anybody. I will be pleased to answer. Dr. Jha, there is one uh, question in the chat box. You can just have a look, please. What is the minimum and maximum spacing? Receiver and source borehole required to carry out tomography. I explained in the beginning that uh, the um, tomography best resolution is two is to one. So minimum and maximum spacing depends on the source type. If you have a large like I have uh, I have shown in the case in the Tista we have done across the river which is 50 meter separation. So we used explosive uh, one quarter gelatine. So if we are permitted to use that. There is nothing minimum maximum, but I suggest that we should maintain two is to one ratio. That means depth is to separation ratio should be two is to one. Then the result will be not biased because it is an inversion. So, so that uh, there will be bias in the output. And if you are not able to analyze the bias, you will really land in a long interpretation. So question is minimum and maximum. I suggest there is nothing minimum and maximum as such. It depends on the source type. Dr. Jha, I have a question for you. Yes, please. Yeah, it was a very interesting presentation. Um, although I am not a geophysicist, but then uh, I have a team of geophysicists who does a lot of work. Um, we do a lot of work, uh, both in India and outside. Uh, I have one question. See, all of you guys are born out of basically KGF. Right? Yeah, see, uh, basically the question is, have you ever done this, used this in uh, Kola Gold Fees to assess uh, the one, the subsidence that can take place uh, below the township? in the above the underground workings that's number one number two is that there's a lot of crown pillar crown areas that has been left you know uh, which still could contain gold uh, is there any on the, on the positive side of it uh, is there any assessment done uh, to assess the value i mean assess the availability of uh, the veins at, uh, near surface or 50 meters or 100 meters and uh, uh, second one is regarding the subsidence. Yeah, the first one is regard question was your uh, bearing subsidence. Uh, we we there is there are better method to do subsidence study by seismic method, but your question is subsidence in the residential area. Yes, we have done when it happened in Anderson Pet area. We had gone with our GPR, and we did help the community, the people there that uh, where is the subsidence and how is how it is directed and area is safe or not. Okay, so whenever, whenever we had opportunity, we did that survey. But regarding the exploration part, uh, we have not done anything. The gold vein excess is there or not, and whether we can use this with GPR or other methods. But if problem is put properly, we could uh, attend to it with a better solution than GPR alone. We have, uh, we have many methods by which we can uh, address the question. Seismic methods also give the answer to a subsidence as well as these uh, deposits. But uh, if um, drilling itself is too costly, if I believe compared to the yes. tomography. So if yes. existing boreholes are available, we can uh, we can do some work and find out whether the veins exist or not, or whether we can do further mining or not. So this this that will be much helpful. 
has, has any studies been done so far? No, we have submitted a proposal to PMO for uh, unlocking the gold, gold vents through GPR, but I don't know where the proposal went. Some proposal was submitted long back during Professor Arjun Gupta tenure for unlocking the reserve gold through GPR survey, and uh, it did not materialize. We did not hear okay. anything out of that. Okay, okay. And there thank are some you. questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Some questions in the chat box. Eh? By Pradeep Gujala, what is the effect of a spacing between the boreholes? A spacing between the boreholes doesn't have any much effect except for the thing that you are losing signal. If you are able to reach the signal from transmitter to receiver, borehole separation doesn't have much influence on the tomogram. We can still get the answer. And somebody from AGP, IIT, ISM, could you please explain a little bit about how GPR tomography technology could be improved in the future or problems you have faced in terms of software or other tools? You see, the tomography is still a gray area with, with the users. They all depend on the software. Nobody has a foundation, a good foundation on the theory part. So software, you have a lot of limitations. What we have seen, what we are using is our own software. Till date, we have not procured the commercial software to process the GPR or seismic data. We are using the own software, which we have got through NGI. Why? Because there are a lot of problems in the software. We get some section, whether it is right or wrong, we do not know. But when we do the work commercially, we cannot say that what we have done is speculative. It has to match. So there are, there are uh, what you are question is very valid question. There, is, there is improvement is required. But improvement will be done only when the three people will sit together, the developer, the geophysics, and the user, end user. So then we can improve. There are many things where we can improve. The first, first thing I will suggest, the control source. That is my favorite topic. If you have a control source, you can do wonder with tomography. Same question, I'm sure. What is the minimum maximum spacing? Minimum and maximum spacing of borehole receiver required to carry a tomography. I will answer in one go. You see the tomography in the beginning, 79 to 90, it was developed to the structure of the earth, that is 6,370 kilometer. With one earthquake data, they are able to decipher the entire structure. So there is nothing minimum, nothing maximum. We can do the entire Brahmand survey with GPR tomography. If you have the signal, that's all. How much expense for tomography? This we cannot answer here. This depends on the problem. <laughs> And tomography used in urban environments, say metro projects where investigation boreholes done at every 100 meter and the same boreholes. Yes, perfectly. This is the most ideal condition for doing tomography. And it should be done. It should be done considering the cases where a lot of uh, TBM um, problems are there. We are not able to run TBM smoothly because of startup problem. This should be done and it is not being done. Okay. How is tomography is calibrated for rock mass quality? How it can identify joint and shear zone? That can be done. If it, it is it is for the geophysicist to answer, it can be done and we are doing it. We are doing it. There is no there is no confusion in that. We would like to go for aquatic aquatic survey for limestone area beneath the mind, especially for certain aquatic life in any cavity. Is tomography helpful? Should be helpful, but we have to see the area and then we can say how whether it is feasible or not. Should be helpful. We can't say it is no, but uh, we see how uh, what what is your area and what we can do. And if it is a convergence, we can take up that job, no problem. I think we we have uh, no more questions in the chat, nor anything. So. I thank you all for a present, giving me a present hearing and listening to this lecture. And once again, we look forward to your participation in the next um, Friday in another lecture series of this Arath Kamrit Motsa. We will uh, we request you to join then again. Thank you.